I am back today with a slightly different thermal imager. My first thermal imager was like this. Uh, it was just from some like no-name brand and it would plug into your phone. Recently I picked up this HSF Tools, um, HF96V, and it's it's nice but it's bulky, right? Like I can't put this in my pocket. It's, it's sizable. You know, everything's contained on the unit. It has the screen and everything, but if I'm gonna use this around my shop, whatever, cool. But I wanted something that I could like carry around a little bit better. And this claims that it's the world's second smallest thermal camera. Um, that sounded great to me, something nice and, and small. First, let's talk about how these two compare. So this thing's actually only $199. Um, at the time of the video, this is about 219. This does a 256 by 192 for infrared, whereas this is 96 by 96. This is a little bit better resolution. This actually has a zoom, and because you're not relying on the built-in battery, this is being powered by your phone battery. This is just so much nicer because it's so small. So this is the Thermalmaster P2. Open up the box, take a look here. So you get the box there. Oops, slid that right off the table. So this has a high temp range of 1,102 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, it's got that 15x digital zoom, 25 hertz refresh rate. It's drawing 0 0.3 watts. So you get your power cable. You've got the uh, rather substantial um, quick start guide and user manual here. And, I mean, that's a chunky boy. So that covers pretty much everything you need. And then you've got the little case that it comes in, and that's pretty much it. Like, that is tiny. And it's got a nice keychain thing, so you can throw it right on your keys if you wanted. Um, it comes with a carabiner in there, so you can clip it to a bag or whatever. But yeah, let me use my giant thumbs here to get into it. That's it, man. That thing's tiny, right? Let me see if I can get it out. And, you know, it claims to be small. So we've got it out there. It's nice and tiny. And I do have uh, an HF Tools one, which is, you know, almost twice the size and even thicker. So this thing really is tiny. Um, like, that is a noticeable difference. You put them there and you, you, you get you get the idea. It really is small. So kind of exciting. They've got their Thermal Master app. Go ahead and plug this in. Now you can plug it directly into your phone or it does come with a cable. Um, you can use that cable or a similar USB-C cable to like have it come off of the phone and, and go somewhere else. This is why they give you the cable. Because of my case, my case is really thick. Let's go ahead and get the cable out. Um, if you have a thinner case, I have really chunky cases on my phones. So, how does this box work? There we go. But that's why they give you the nice little cable. So, you just plug it into there. And now you can plug it into your phone. You don't have to worry about taking your case off. They got you covered. Let's go ahead and lock my phone again. Uh, it would like to handle the camera. Yes. And... There you go. So right now it's seeing the can light in the ceiling up there. Um, you can see my finger there. And yeah, I just want to go ahead and play with this thing. The app's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. You can uh, change the, you know, the representation of the temperatures and everything if you want. Uh, I just leave it on the iron red because I think it's the one that's most visually appealing. You can draw circles and stuff around stuff to kind of, you know, focus on a specific area. You can take photos or you can, so you can take a photo. Let's have a look at me here for a second. It's upside down there, there we go. So, you know, like my glasses reflect infrared, so you can't see through them, but you know, you just take your photo or I can go ahead and get video, give it the permissions at once. And we'll go ahead and throw this video up on screen so you can get an idea of what it's like. But what I like about this is this is very smooth. The, uh, that HSF tools one, it's kind of choppy. The one I had before is even choppier. You do see my mouse a little um, lagged, but not a big deal. Like you get real time basically with this which is great if you're trying to diagnose something. You don't want to wait for the stupid refresh and everything. So let's go ahead and stop that. So up here at the top, you can change the temperature range. Right, let's look at that can light again. And we're just going to pinch to zoom. 
So you can zoom in, which is kind of nice. So when you're here in the camera, you just come up here to the top and you go back, you can go into the settings. Uh, it'll tell you like the device details and stuff. Uh, you can change your image settings. You've got some options there to put a watermark or, you know, handle your video recording settings and whatnot. You come here to the temperature settings. I keep it on Fahrenheit because that's what I'm familiar with. Um, you can also set a temperature alarm for low or high, and then you can mess with the variable correction if you want. Um, it gives the common emissivity for the different materials, and you can change all that stuff. You can change the measurement distance. I have it on 0.25 meters right now. Let's go ahead and look at some stuff with this thing. Um, let me clear the space off here real quick and we'll get some stuff going. So I've got a candle going here. Let me get the camera where you can see it. And you know, there we go. Oh, that's interesting. You can actually see the smoke coming off because it's carrying heat. I never would have thought of that, but yeah. And now I believe it does have a burn detection. Yep, there we go. The burn detection kicked in. It detected a high heat source, wanted me to move the lens away from the high temperature radiation source. So we can confirm that and it'll go away. And then, oh, yep, yeah, see, that kicks in quick. Nice little safety feature. I just love watching the smoke there. Let's go ahead and take a couple photos here. So there's some photos we can look at. Well, I can take video with this Thermal Master, but with like this HF96V, I can only take still images. I'm gonna try to make these uh, similar here, but you know, I've only got so many hands. But yeah, just the fact that you can do video with the one and you can't with the other just kind of makes it better. Um, you can still see in real time on both displays, but sometimes it's nice to catch the video because if something is dynamic and a temperature is changing and you want to look at it later and kind of see, you know, where something's going wrong or whatever in like an engine or something, or to see how heat's distributing through something over time, it's so much better to be able to capture that video. And you just can't do that with this. This also has a lot better resolution than the HF96V as you can see here with this computer. Um, can't really tell so much with the monitor, but when we're looking at that little mini computer on the display on my phone for the Thermal Master, I'm getting much better detail than I am with the HF96V. And then if we look across the room here, same kind of deal. It's nice and crystal clear with the Thermal Master and the HF96V is kind of washed out. Now let's get something else going here. Go ahead and slide the candle out of the way a little. Get the next thing going. So I go to these little heat warmer things, hand warmer things. Um, let me find the little tab in it so we can pop it and get it going. There it is. Again, I'm gonna grab some video of this. Oh wow, it's warming up fast. That is wild. Let me turn it around here. So now that we've got it on point, I can point and it'll tell me the temperature of the item. So I'm gonna set that down, that way I can take a photo. So let me click that and we're gonna take a picture. Now let's see what that's doing. Oh yeah, that is freaking amazing. <laughs> Talk about real time. That is so cool. Let me get some video of this. Take a look at my phone, my hand, the candle. That, this is awesome. This is so much better than that other one. I'm gonna have some fun with this thing. Um, let's see if we can get the temperature there. And now let's take a couple of photos here. Get the phone in, get all the family together. Pretty cool. Um, I really like this thing. So I'm gonna put some pants on and we'll pop outside. So I just started the car. Let me get the hood up and we'll go ahead and get some video here. So already stuff's about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. It's warming up pretty quick there on the engine block. Kind of, it's hard for you to see that. So I'll put the video up on the screen. We're at 51 degrees Fahrenheit there on the engine cover. So the engine block itself is doing about 140 now. And now I'm gonna look like the neighbor's house. Look at the neighbor's house. We still have this at about a quarter uh, meter. 
but it's still, you know, getting decent heat off of things. You can see my hand and phone. You can see the headlights there. Just kind of look around the yard. Okay, so here's something interesting. I got the sun in focus and the burn protection kicked on. Um, I'm gonna go in this and see if I can't figure out how to turn that off because if I even get it within like a foot or a foot and a half of the engine block, it immediately hints it's at danger. So hopefully we can turn that off. When we go back in, we'll take a look at that. So we're back inside now and I've got into temperature, or into settings and then temperature settings and you can go in there and turn the burn protection off. Uh, only do that if you're gonna be safe. Obviously I was getting false positives at a distance. You know, I would rather be overcautious than, uh, you know, let me get something too close to heat and stop. But like the sun triggered it and the, um, you know, just getting it remotely close to the engine killed it. And to be fair, it's not like it has a temperature sensor built into it, so it can't detect that. It's going completely off what it can see. And while I know that it was in a safe distance, it erred on the side of caution and warned me. But I've gone, on, gone ahead and it turned that off. I will say it also lets you export right to your Google Drive or your Dropbox. It's pretty cool. Makes it handy to get all the files off the phone easily if you wanted to use them on a computer or if you just wanted to share them with someone. Um, that one I had before that was a little like this, it did not give me that option. So I really like that that's an option. You don't have to like go to your computer, get the cable, transfer it over, you know, set your Android device into USB mode or whatever. You just boom, share them to Dropbox, Google Drive, whatever. So that's been the Thermal Master P2. It runs on Android. Nice little thing. Again, it's got this little pretty tough case. It's got the little clip for your key ring or your carabiner. It does come with a carabiner. It's got a nice instruction manual comes with the USB cable. If you weren't using a thick case, you could just pop that thing right on there. But it's nice having this, because you can also like kind of dangle this down into some place where maybe your phone won't fit. And you can be looking at the screen and be like, oh, okay, yeah, got it. So it's running hot down there and then you know what you're doing. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. There'll be a link in this. Link to this in the description and sticky comments like normal. I hope you guys have a nice day.